So in this video, I want to talk about how to become magnetic, letting all women go. And this is a five step process. I want to take you through our five steps of, of things that you really need to understand to apply this. And if you stay to the end, that fifth step is going to be essential in making the other four work. So let's dive in. In the meantime, uh, you might notice I'm in a different location. I'm in Chamonix, France, and I've been skiing. Unfortunately, there's not much snow here. I was at a networking event last week for uh, really successful entrepreneurs. I was doing a keynote speaker and uh, it was it's been a blast. Last. It's been a lot of fun and I got a chance to visit this amazing ski resort. It's absolutely incredible. If you ever get a chance to come out here when they have good snow, definitely do that. So uh, let's dive in. The first thing you need to realize, the first thing you need to do if you want to be really magnetic is you got to connect to your turn on. That is essential. Um, I talk about this a lot. I just recently did a video called the James Dean meditation to help you cultivate this but if you don't have access to your turn on you're ashamed of your turn on you're ashamed of your sexuality as a man you're ashamed of your cock and balls then um then you're gonna have a problem you're gonna have issues in this area also you can't be uh concerned with uh, women's sexuality women having a pussy be afraid of the pussy so many men are uh sexuality is a healthy normal thing you wouldn't be here without it so what do you have to do to get in touch with your cock and balls to get in touch with your turn on well it's it's more than just your cock it's more than just your balls it's the whole hip area when you start to get comfortable with turn on you'll start to learn to relax and rest in this area of your body more and more you'll start you'll feel almost like a tingle or warmth down there if you if you're not thinking about it you'll still kind of subconsciously feel it. What I mean by that is if you go back, if somebody says, hey, can you feel that area of your body? You go, oh yeah, I've been feeling it. It's It almost becomes automatic. And so we do moving meditations to develop a, a relationship with this part of your body. Why is this so important? Well, if you walk over to a woman and you approach her and you tell her she's hot, she's beautiful, you start flirting with her, even if you're playing a push-pull game, she needs to feel that turn on. She needs to feel that you are actually interested in her, that you're attracted to her. It can just be a warmth or a grounding or a tingling or a power that comes from that part of your body. And if she feels you hiding it, and on one level you're saying, I like you, but on another level, there's nothing there, why should she get attracted to you? You're gonna feel more like a friend to her. And on the other side of it, if you get too powerful in that area and you have no vulnerability, no heart, which we're gonna get into in a moment, you can come across creepy or weird. And uh, these things we definitely don't want to have happen to you. So start working on getting in touch with that part right away learn to own it learn to be with it i see so many men that can get women interested and intrigued because they have this beautiful upper energy but they have no turn on they have no grounding and the grounding feeds the turn on too as, as part of that just so you understand and they have no turn on and that keeps them from ultimately being able to get the women of their dreams okay uh, that's number one so definitely check out the james dean meditation if you haven't checked it out already um you got to open your heart uh, so you don't come across as creepy. This is, uh, I just mentioned this. This is number two. Open your heart so you don't come across as creepy. Uh, uh, guys that are really good with women, they have a vulnerability right here, a connection. Now, a lot of people get scared when I say vulnerability. A lot of men get scared when I say vulnerability. Vulnerability is not weakness or neediness. You may interpret vulnerability as neediness, but that's not actually what it is. Vulnerability is the willingness to be authentic and real. It's the willingness to blush. It's the willingness to be nervous. It's the willingness to be wowed by her emotionally. So you got your turn on and you got your vulnerability. It's also your ability to step into your fear. If you're really good at vulnerability, you'll step into fear and you'll say, damn, you make me nervous. Look at you. And you might even have a shaking lip, but you're like, I showed up anyways. And how can any man be sexier than that? If he can slay his own fear, show up anyways, be powerful in that moment, that is a damn attractive man. Um, I've seen it happen so many times with clients. They walk up, they're nervous, they're kind of pulling their energy back, then they show up fully. They get that vulnerable heart, they're shaking, but they're like, I don't care, I'm here anyways. I'm not afraid of my own emotion. That's what they're saying. And what, and, but what woman wouldn't want that? That's what I'm talking about. Now, neediness is different. Don't confuse that with neediness. Sometimes guys get comfortable with feeling their heart and they pull it back and say, don't hurt me. Oh, poor me. You know, don't, I just want to say you're really pretty, but th th there's a sense of vulnerability in the sense that they can feel, but not in the sense that they're owning it. And that's very, very different. That is when they start to step into true fear. Okay. 
um, if you step into your vulnerability and own your fear and say, I can handle it, then you're actually stepping into courage and you're going into excitement. Damn, she makes me nervous. I can't wait to approach her. Okay, time for number three. Number three. Number three, be aware of how um, how they're feeling to you, the women, how the women feel to you. Uh, they'll send you signals and you have to invite them in. You have to dance off of those signals. I created a product called Sex Signals uh, that really goes through all of this, but women are constantly sending signals, whether they like you, don't like you, they're flirting. And usually there's many signals, there's not one. If you just see one, it could be a, a nervous tick. But if you see three or four of these signals, like playing with her hair, looking at you and looking down, looking sideways, um, her voice starts to change. She gets more feminine and giggly, things like this. And then she's probably into you. And you want to start playing off of that. Now, women sometimes do play cold, aloof, and distance, but they, as they do it, they lean in more and more. And that's an indication that they're playing with you. They're testing you. I had one woman getting really mad at me uh, when I was talking um, a little sexual one time. I was experimenting with this idea of being dirtier and more sexual upon meeting a woman. And uh, I started talking more sexual and she's like, why would you talk like that? That, that you shouldn't you shouldn't say stuff like that as she's leaning in closer and closer and getting more turned on and you could feel it happening. So learning to read those signals and then number two, not taking them personal, not making them mean something like a lot of guys, when that girl starts to lean in, they get scared and want to run away and then they feel rejected. Or when she pulls back and starts to shut down, even if she's testing you or not testing you, they take it as rejection and they run away. So they're their own worst enemies and they never get anywhere. So learning to read signals becomes super essential for the guy that really wants to take it to the next level. Okay. That this is, <laughs> I can't tell you how important this is. So uh, definitely check out our product sex signals for that or get on the internet and just search uh women's signals learn there's all kinds of youtube videos on it too there's all kinds of trainings on it just get out there learn and start and watch go to the bar watch women interact with really solid guys watch how they flirt and play coy and move in and move out there's a dance that goes on you got to honor that dance that is a mating ritual think of it that way number four in the list is create the container for them so that they can start seducing you um, you got to allow things to unfold. You got to give t things time to unfold. You got to give time for that dance. So when that dance starts, it's going to continue for a while and it's going to amp and it's going to be building sexual tension, which then at some point that tension is going to seek resolution. That's when you two come together. And so you got to create a container or a space for this. That's what the masculine does. The feminine fills that space with femininity. She can let go over. If you do a really good job of creating a really good container, which is the masculine role, she can let go of that role. She can let go of her masculine and she can go all the way into her feminine, hundred percent into her feminine, just be a feminine creature for you. And there's nothing more that women love than that. So she wants to be beautiful for you, for you. She wants to dance for you. She wants to inspire you. She wants to lean her turn on into you. She wants to play coy and, and flirt with you. Just like I was talking about earlier with all this stuff that uh these signals and now she's going to amp them up so what would that look like well that would look like um like if you take her out somewhere and you have a really like you walk in you know the waiter you have a nice table it's all set up or you guys go to your favorite bar where you know the environment you know the music you created a safe space and you set it up so people aren't bumping into you you're not being distracted by other people so you two can really create a nice bit of tension your own little bubble together and then you relax into that bubble like a tree trunk relax into the ground or paint frame hangs on the wall and you just relax and then you invite her to be feminine and you invite her to dance and play and flirt. And don't worry, you don't have to do everything. You can give her roles. You can give her jobs to do. Imagine you bring her over to your house for a nice dinner and you set the scene and then you start giving her roles to do. You start, you know, telling her what you want to cut and then you're leaning over and cutting it with her. And then you're telling her, you go turn on that music, you know, you know, uh, while you're cooking something, can you pour, pour some more champagne or some wine or bring the bottle of wine? You're the director. But think about it in an orchestra or in a or in a, or or in a in a situation where you have a director and a follower. The follower still does stuff. They just fill up the space and they do stuff that they're really good at. In a weird sort of way, if you give somebody a job to do, you're doing it because they're typically better at it than you. And then you you give them that space to do it. And then you appreciate it and enjoy it. And you learn from them just as much as they learn from you. You just maintain the direction and the flow of that energy. So you're more of a channeler than a leader. Think of it that way. You're creating the perfect scenario 
for beautiful things to happen between you and her. Okay. Number five, this is probably the most important because the rest of these are not going to work. You've heard me talk about it before. I have an amazing video on this topic, letting all women go. And there's actually a series of them, but the first one killed it. Actually, they all did pretty well. But in this case, you've got to, um, you got to let her go. What do I mean by that? I don't mean physically kick her out the door. I mean, let go of all your attachment to outcome. All your aversion to her coming towards you, you got to let go of all the stories you have about where you want this to go. Ultimately, it doesn't mean you can't intend for it to move in the right direction. It doesn't mean you can't set up the scenario for it to move in the right direction. It doesn't mean you can't even channel it or lead it in that direction. But the attachment to the outcome is the problem. The more women feel you attached to wanting something from them, and you can see this in bars, all, every night, guys want to get their number, want to get the kiss, want to get the date, want to take them home. The more women pull back, they hate that. It, it's like um, anti, anti-woman anti uh, spray or something. Because the more you lean into them, the more they don't feel safe, the more they feel used, the more they feel creepy. Even if a woman is looking for a one night stand, the more a man is leaning into her and wanting, the less attractive he is to her, the less sexy he is to her, even if she finds him super hot and super attractive. And this is simply because it implies neediness when you lean in. It implies a part of you that won't be happy unless I get X, which means you're not in the now with her. Women are all about the now. You're not sitting there and truly enjoying her in the moment. She wants to be seduced from moment to moment because you're enjoying every moment with her and make it seem like that it actually naturally progressed and happened on its own, like, like, like a tree growing, a plant growing, a flower opening. And it's a natural progression of tension to resolution. And if you force that process through wanting, it actually kills it. You can see this everywhere in life too. Think about salespeople. I remember this one sales guy that used to come up to me on uh, on the mall I used to go hang out at all the time uh, with my friends and I would go take a walk and this guy would come right over to me, forcing, 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 pushing. He couldn't feel anything. And every time he came over to me, uh, almost <laughs> every few days, I'd be like, dude, you don't remember me from a few days ago. You came up and asked me the same questions. He was so in his head, so disconnected from his body. He couldn't even remember approaching me two days ago. And that happened a bunch of times. And it's the same thing. I see the same thing with guys in bars going up to woman after woman, hunting, hunting, hunting. The energy is just directed forward. They're like, hey, how you doing? What's your name? Where are you from? Oh, yeah, I see what you mean there. It's a character. They're not feeling the core of their body because they're in their heads pushing. They got too big of a goal in mind. It's OK to have a goal. Just be unattached to it. The universe knows your goal. Think of it that way. And your subconscious knows your goal. Let it go. Relax into your spine. Relax into your body. Relax into your turn on the goal will come when the goal comes. Now I'm going to enjoy this human being right in front of me, this beautiful, sexy, vibrant woman. I'm going to take this moment to tell her she's fucking sexy. I'm going to take this moment to tell her she's a pain in the ass, but I like you. I'm going to take this moment to pull her in like I'm going to kiss her and then push her back. Give her some more tension. Give her something to play with. Give her a dance. I'm going to relax with her and flow with her. Pretty soon, She'll be chasing you. She'll be trying to get to move it forward for you. She'll be trying to get into your container. She'll be wanting to fill up your container for you. And that's ultimately what you want. So letting all women go is huge. Now, if you want to understand this at a deeper level, watch my video, letting all women go. It's huge. So hopefully you really like this video. If you did, make sure to hit that like button, hit the bell notification to subscribe, make sure to share the video and um, make sure to put a comment in the video. Uh, that's huge. And uh, the comments really help me to understand what you want more of. And if I haven't said it already, make sure to subscribe so you don't miss any of the awesome content. And by the way, one more reminder, um, I am, Fearless is still going, but I am moving the business over to another format called True Courage. TrueCourage.io is the channel. If you wanna sign up for the YouTube channel, definitely uh, check that out. If you wanna sign up for my Instagram, which doesn't have any content on it yet, but will soon, it's Brian Brian K. Bajan. Uh, Brian K. Begin, you know, my last name. And that's going to be the new Instagram once I launch it. So we're going to have, and then we're going to have a eventually new YouTube, Instagram, everything. And it's going to be all about building powerful courage in the world to become passionate and successful. Okay. Remember, only the courageous really live. I'll see you in the next video. Take care.